Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about <coughs> cleaning and putting carb kits into uh, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, um, OMC, Johnson, Ebenrude, uh even um, the Gale Motors from uh, uh, late, uh, mid to late uh, 50s and 60s. Um, we have uh, two carbs here, and we're going to show you several different others. Um, this carb um, is uh, has a you can tell has a uh, low speed needle and a high speed needle down at the bottom. At the bottom here we have uh, your float bowl, and then you have your choke linkages, and then you have your cam follower here with the linkages and stuff like that. And so all these carburetors are very very similar in nature. Uh, they're the float bowls with the little screws down at the bottom here, uh, and then uh, and then cleaning them is very very similar. We also have a carb here from um, uh, probably mid late uh, 1950s. I'm not sure where it came from. It was in a box of parts. But as you can see, it has a high speed needle, a low speed needle, <coughs> excuse me, a low speed needle here, and then you have uh, your choke linkages here. A uh, little bit difference in orientation, but all very, very similar. Uh, and then down at the bottom here, you can see that uh, uh, at the bottom of the fuel <coughs> fuel bowl, there's like a little glass bowl here, and it has something that's holding it on here. If you loosen this up, and you and it pulls back like this, if you pull this little glass bowl up, you can see there's lots of really thick varnish from oil and gas that can be easily cleaned. Um, but also, I want to point out too with these um, older uh, carbs. Um, that here holding in place there is actually a little filter inside here a little cylindrical filter that's made of some type of ceramic or some type of pore stone um, and that is actually your filter uh, for like the uh, single uh, like the older single line systems and uh, your two line pressure um, pressure tank system this little filter keeps all the uh, the muck and stuff from going inside the carburetor uh, a lot of times that can be source of aggravation because a lot of people w will not realize that this uh, little filter is all clogged up so it can present as a fuel delivery issue when you've cleaned everything else out. A lot of times this can be unscrewed from the bottom here, lifted this off, there's a little gasket down at the rim here. They can be easily purchased or made by a cork type gasket. Uh, and uh, this little thing should be cleaned in like half and half um, water and pine saw. Let it soak overnight uh, and it will not harm it. And then you can get uh, like a, a little air, uh, air tank system and kind of blow it out and soak it a couple of times and blow it out so it'll clean it and uh, you can preserve it. Th these probably cost anywhere from, uh, who, depending on who you buy it from, about 10 to 20 uh, bucks for that little pore stone. But anyway, uh, it, it, uh, it's it works, it's very efficient, uh, but just wanted to let you know that can be an issue for some of the older carburetors. Uh, what we have here is a uh, 1964 um, <clears throat> uh, 18 horsepower um, and this uh, carburetor again has very similar features as a silencer in the front or uh, was an advancement of the silencer and so um, uh, this has a fixed jet down at the bottom has a, a fixed jet orifice and so that does not have a high speed needle uh, and uh, that is very um, is very precise in the fuel delivery it gives so it's not a very good idea to go and clean that little orifice out with uh, some wire or something like that because uh, you can damage it uh, sometimes soaking it alone is just not enough sometimes you have to get in there with a, a special little tool and remove that little uh, orifice plug and clean it out uh, carefully uh, here I have uh, you probably seen in my previous uh, my other videos is a 1968 Johnson 6 horsepower um, I got this motor from a guy for very, very cheap. It was a basket case, and I'm slowly rehabbing it. I'm not going to do any cosmetics on it, but <clears throat> and I'm slowly uh, restoring it. To, it can be used as a salt motor motor for crabbing and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, this also uh, has a um, <clears throat> a carburetor with a fixed uh, a fixed uh, fixed jet high speed orifice and so uh, just like the 18 horsepower and uh, again 
I'm going to be removing this one and working on this one uh, to show and demonstrate uh, uh, <clears throat> how to uh, open and clean a carb and uh, return it. Uh, a lot of problems a lot of times is really getting at this carb for this little type motor for the six horsepower because you here you have the uh, starter and the starter is usually in the way. There's a little nut down at the bottom here that, um, <clears throat> and uh, if you um, move remove this little uh, bolt right here and this little bolt right here down the back right here if you remove those and you gently push this slightly to the side uh, and uh, you remove the screw from the cam follower here and you slide that forward you can get to the nut uh, back here that's holding uh, the carburetor uh, in addition to the other one here that's holding the carburetor to the bottom and it makes it a lot easier to take out rather than trying to remove all of the um, <clears throat> the starter because uh, the starter spring will become unloose uh, and it will create a big old problem for you uh, also too for some of these motors the uh, low speed needle and the high speed needle both come out from the bottom but just this I mean from the top and the bottom uh, just this one right here comes out uh, up at the top and so what we have to do there is just loosen this up okay and remove it carefully to protect the point of the needle and so I'm going to be doing that in just a little bit. Again, remove, uh, you do not have to remove the starter to get uh, to this carburetor. All you have to do is uh, loosen this bolt here, okay, and remove it, and loosen the bolt here and remove it. And then take this starter and slightly slide it to the slide, uh, keeping it intact down at the bottom of the base. And then you can get a, I think it's a 716 down at the bottom there and loosen that nut up for unloosening and tightening purposes. Going back to the 18 horsepower, if you look at the 18 horsepower, there's not a lot to get in the way. It's very easy to get to the, um, uh, to get to the, uh, the, uh, the, the nuts here holding uh, the carburetor to the motor. Uh, this one, the only problem that this one would present here is off to the side, some of the linkages in the way. All you have to do is slightly slide this linkage forward just like this and you can get to the nut, okay? And then undo it. Also, uh, removing this little, uh, this little linkage, uh, the little pin going to the linkage will uh, cause this little linkage, uh, like just like this, to pull it out and then removing it just like this. Uh, will uh, allow you to uh, remove the carb from the body. In addition to uh, removing uh, this uh, right here down at the bottom, this little <clears throat> screw that's holding the uh, that's holding the uh, the choke uh, the choke knob here. Okay. Once you remove this, you can easily remove the choke knob and slide it out. Uh, here down at the bottom. There is a little uh, e-retaining uh, e uh, clip down here, okay, that holds this little linkage here in place. If that little e-clip comes out along with the little wave washer, uh, you can slide the, uh, the adjustment knob here out, and so then you can uh, unbolt and uh, remove the carb from the body to work on. So that's not really that hard. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause this for now and I'm going to uh, remove the carbs from the, uh, the motors for time saving purposes and I'm going to put it on the bench.